Welcome everybody to another episode of Ludiculous. Uh, I'm Felix Supernova, uh, and today we're using Saints Row the Third to talk about Henry Jenkins' four E's of spatial storytelling. Uh, so the first one uh, is evocative spaces. So I've chosen to do one of these Professor Genki's side missions uh, because this is an extremely evocative space. Uh, because it's a television set. We can tell that it's a television set uh, because of the way that the props are made to look like cheap cardboard or, or uh, cheap wooden set pieces uh, that, that place us in a space in which television could be made. So we can read one thing from this space, uh, that, that we are on a television program. The narration helps, but that's not entirely spatial. Uh, if they were on set doing it, it possibly, uh, uh, it possibly would be more uh, visually descriptive and therefore could be a part of the evocative space, uh, but it's not. Um, so this space um, goes beyond ev evoking, however, just that it's a TV show. The fact that it's a TV show, uh, and this space is, is created here to talk about that, uh, demonstrates the mentality of the citizens of Steelport as well. Um, this may not be evocative in a narrow sense, um, I don't want to die. Um, look, I, I've explored most of the interesting parts of evocative spaces, uh, or rather discovered most of the interesting parts. Of the bullet holes here, the bullet holes in the walls here too are, are evocative. Uh, this space is one that's been used for murder a lot. Uh, this space is... Uh, also, the blood on the walls shows us that people have failed uh, to engage with this space or failed the show. And that tells us a little bit of a narrative. Okay, so we've looked at Professor Genki, we've explored why that's an evocative space. Let's move on. Okay, so the next of the four E's is an enacted story. So what makes an enacted story? Well, uh, it's pretty much in the title, acting out the story. So I'm being told uh, by the game to go uh, to this marker, uh, they're through going through this space uh, and acting the story to get to the marker um, is what this category is all about. Now there are two subcategories. Uh, the first subcategory is uh, goals and conflicts. So if I... Uh, so the main goal of this game is to become the dominant gang in the city. And the conflicts is that there are lots of other gangs that want to do that as well, including the military. Um, so we can talk more specifically then about localized instances. And that's essentially any enacted story that happens as an iterance as opposed to a broad stroke. So uh, in this example, uh, you can fail this mission by killing somebody or accidentally running over or behaving in any other function than a stag operative. Let me do that for you actually. Uh, which breaks your cover and makes you fail the mission. Now there's a localized incident. I blew my cover because when I was enacting the story, I failed to articulate the goals correctly and now we have a new narrative, one that exists outside of the intended narrative. Okay, let's move on to embedded narratives. Okay, so uh, we're going to be talking about the third E now. Uh, that is uh, embedded narratives. So embedded narratives uh, are different from evocative spaces uh, in that it set pieces in and of themselves where other than the space consisting of many pieces of set dressing. Um, so here is an embedded narrative. We took this base by force uh, and the embedded narratives in this uh, evocative space tell that story. There are better 
um, examples. And I'll find one in this office right now. If we take a look at my computer, uh, we'll see that my screensaver is a version of a meme that you'll see in the real world, the keyboard cat. Uh, except it's been interpreted uh, by Saints Row um, in their universe with their cultural touchstones. So Johnny Gat, uh, who is one of the leaders of the Saints uh, with you, um, who dies at the beginning of this game? I can't quite remember. Anyway, um, so we have a, an embedded narrative uh, about their world. So they consume pop culture like us. Uh, it means something slightly more to them, I think we can tell uh, from this embedded narrative because uh, we wouldn't set a meme as our screensaver. We would post a meme to somebody else's uh, Facebook wall, for example. Um, I'm not going to answer that cell phone. Um, but you know, I, the embedded narrative, uh, or as Henry Jenkins says, uh, perhaps it's best to look at the embedded narrative through uh, a quote from Henry Jenkins. Uh, Henry Jenkins says, uh, with an open-ended and exploratory, na exploratory narrative structure like a game, essential narrative information must be redundantly presented across, across a range of spaces and artifacts. Since one cannot assume the player will necessarily locate or recognize the significance of any given element. So these are the staged um, environmental uh, pieces of narrative uh, that probably explore less uh, linear narrative elements and, and, and describe uh, uh, character-driven elements or environmental-driven elements of the narrative. Uh, yes, so let's move on uh, to the fourth E, and it's going to be the hardest one for me to acquire because it requires uh, to emerge naturally from the machine of the game. From the, the accumulation of all the mechanics, uh, we should be able to see an emergent narrative uh, come from all the actions that NPCs could possibly take. So I'm just going to keep recording uh, and I'll cut back in when I see a good piece of emerge, emergent. Well, we've found a fantastic emergent narrative here. Um, because the clipping is not executing properly, uh, a new narrative is being constructed about this space. Uh, and, and that narrative, narrative is that uh, this space is intrinsically different from our own world. Uh, there is no core to the earth. There is no mantle to the earth. This is clearly some other dimension. Uh, and we can project whole narrative worlds now onto this emergent um, form that's happening to the game, which is essentially a glitch. Uh, a lot of emergent narratives are glitches, but they don't have to be. It just has to be uh, something that happens, comes out of the world from the system that's created for the game. Uh, yeah, no, I, th I, I think that neatly covers emergent narratives. So let's leave it at that, shall we? Thank you so much for joining us here on Ludiculous. I've been Felix Supernova, and we'll see you next week when we use XCOM to look at uh, Ebert's argument uh, that games are not art. Uh, I look forward to hearing hateful comments in, in the uh, comments section about that. And until then, uh, have a fantastic week. I'll see you then.